<laughs> That's amazing. Over the weekend, our female athletes made Nigeria proud again at the just-concluded Commonwealth Games in Birmingham City, United Kingdom. Nigeria won a record-breaking 12 gold medals. Oh, All women. Mm -hmm. Like, today, 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 our shoulder part is very, very high. Nice. You know, so today was celebrating <laughs> All the women, our women, who are now pay setters anywhere and everywhere around the world. What are your thoughts on this? Well, having you to join the conversation, call us on 081-270-53687. Or you can call us on 091-390-76948. Now, ladies, like, I, you know, when you just, there's, it's, it's just, there's something about sports. You know, sport unifies us. Everyone. And I just felt so happy. <laughs> it was more like, what's going on? There were times when we go for these games and we get nothing. Mm. And it's not because we don't have talent. But to now see that our women had the opportunity, had a platform to showcase themselves is just so humbling and joyful moment for everyone. BC, what was, how was this weekend? At least <gasps> out of all the things that happened, this should be <laughs> something for you to smile about. Yes, yes. I was all smiles because it just occurred to me that uh, we can actually begin to put our names in the global map positively. Mm. Every time you hear Nigerians this, Nigerians that, we don't hear the positive sides. So it's true. always uh, somebody has carried drugs, somebody has mm. done this, somebody has done that. But now it still shows that even though it looks like we're struggling a bit, we can still do something. And this for me should make everybody wake up to understand the responsibility that lies with all of us in ensuring that in our little corner, even if we're, I'm not jumping 100 meters here, wherever I find myself that I have to be excellent, I have to put in the work, I have to be dogged, I have to have integrity. As in, I, sh I should put my hand on my chest and say, as a Nigerian, I don't tell lies. Mm. Like, we should be known for good things and we should work on it gradually. We'll get there. Um, I was happy when I saw uh, the punch uh, papers talking about uh, Esse Brume, who won the Commonwealth Games record. Mm -hmm. They said that uh, she broke the Commonwealth Games record on Sunday to clinch the gold medal in the women's long jump. I remember, you know, at the time I was growing up, my father is a coach, he's an athlete, and he wanted me to do all these games. <laughs> I did long jump, high jump. <laughs> I did basketball. I did handball. I did... Uh, a football, I did all of them, it did not work. <laughs> it was not my thing. But he kept forcing and forcing. And after some point, he just gave up like, I don't think any of my children will take after me. And unfortunately, none of his kids. Oh, took after it will come him. back in So as I was looking at I'm like, ah, my father will be sitting down now. I'll be like, ah, ah, this should have been my daughter. Oh. But don't worry, your daughter is still doing well wherever she, <laughs> yes. she is. But as a Nigerian, honestly, this is um, something that should wake everybody up. Let me leave it at that. I'm super, double, double, super proud of these ladies. <laughs> They've given me something to look. In the mm. weekend, it was just weddings for me. <laughs> and then I heard my husband increasing the volume and cheering mm. from the parlor. I went to join him, and I was so happy that this is good news. And the other part of the news that was trending online can be forgotten because <laughs> of these ladies. God bless them. Yeah, but bless it must be said that they didn't hop on to, up into this, this way. Mm, mm. If you look at Abosa's story, we shared it the week before, yes. how she had to start early, the number of times she was told no, she was turned down by the country that gave her scholarship eventually, mm. and you know, she kept pushing. That perseverance spirit that we are known for. Mm. I remember in the 90s, like they would say, Nigeria, no matter where you put Nigeria, you go survive. Yeah. Mm. You know, we are known for perseverance spirit. May it come back. May it, this youth I hope that these are their role models now and they learn to persevere. Yeah. And look at the ultimate picture because you'll get it. Mm. No matter what happens, keep at it, you'll get it. This is what these ladies have shown. Esse Brume had her losses. She had a continuous trial. And even this job. Yes, in the last competition. You know? She didn't get... Exactly. Yes. So she didn't doubt Silver. herself. Yes. She walked Silver. away from it. Yes. We also had other wins. I think we had the... Um, relay. Re uh, relay. All the four throw. ladies. Yes. The I, relay. Um, four by I think we also did well in weightlifting. It yeah. wasn't exactly... I'm mean, not exactly sure whether it's it was gold. Problem. We did well. Mm. So we've... Our team generally at the Commonwealth... Good. Although the Commonwealth is not a game I really... So we're... Even though we're... We are definitely celebrating our women, and mm -hmm. we're so, so proud of them. I'm triply, doubly, you know, proud of them. But also, we must recognize that our men, too, 
won a bronze as well at the Commonwealth Games. And they said this is the first time in many years yes. since they had won something. So I believe that the wins the of the <laughs> women inspired and motivated them, Men. you know, to go for, for, for their own win. I'm just, for me, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about this and all that women are doing, and I feel that it is the reflection of the gradual change in how we are raising our children, yep. how we're empowering girl, the girl child. Mm -hmm. There used to be a time that to join sports, a girl child would have to have that conversation of, I don't want to be like a man. I don't want to look like a man. Mm -hmm. Is this, what are you going to do um, instead of getting married? Mm -hmm. You know, we're more and more allowing our girls to be who they are, what they want, and just pursue their dreams. And then we're seeing the reflection of that in so many things. And so this is, this is just, you know, telling us that in politics and governance as we well, when we encourage up. women, we will see gold medal yes. behavior and performances in we that aspect. Capacity. In our economy, we have seen it once before, and we'll see it again, you know, in, in our economy, in our politics, in our governance, in our health, in our education. More women, better performances, and just... I'm just so proud of us. Look at them. See how fit and how yes, beautiful really, really they look. Beautiful. Beautiful. And the last time we had this set of, we, this is a new crop of female athletes. Yes. Before now, we had the Blessed yes. Okabari. Mm -hmm. We had Mary Yale. Yes. We this, this, this is a new set that is very inspiring. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll take in your calls to tell us how this made you feel and how inspired you are about these women. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we've been discussing the joy, you know, the moment of triumph that all Nigerians felt at the Commonwealth Games when the women were getting gold, silver, our men, one of our men got bronze. And I, I remember growing up, I used to love watching. We used to gather like a everybody together. We watch when there's Olympic, all of us sit down, watch opening. We watch the athletics. When they're doing Commonwealth Games, we all gather to watch because it was just the time like we were hopeful to get medals. Mm. But at a point in time, the medals stopped coming. And so Nigerians stopped gathering yes. to watch interest. those things. We lost interest in it. And now, after the um, last one we had with Toby, um, mm. Toby Amusa mm. and as well as um, mm. Esebrume, then Commonwealth came, we saw more people watching. Mm. I'm sure the next game, we would get more massive. people watching. Mm. That has a ripple effect that we're not noticing because what happens is people, advertisers, knowing that Nigerians would watch, would sponsor more sporting Come events. Mm. And the sponsorship would also improve more athletic activities mm. by Nigerians. And but I think that's know, something... That, that thing you mentioned now is something that just reminded me of the sort of experiences my father and his team had back in Delta State. So I remember that um, they kept complaining that the government wasn't funding sports mm. that much. They would go for competitions in other states. They barely have a place to sleep. They barely have food to eat. Mm. I grew up having sports people sleeping all over my sitting room because they are, they are doing something in the stadium, but there's no space, there's no provision. There's no provision for and my father had to take care of his own his athletes own from his own personal funds. Wow. You know? So now that we are beginning to kindle, uh, rekindle our interest in sports and sponsorships will now be coming, I think the government needs to position itself so that these people are better prepared. One of the reasons we don't do so well when we go to the international waters is the fact that we do not have that uh, platform to prepare properly. Mm -hmm. When you go outside the country and see how many months it takes people to prepare before yes. a competition, it, when it comes to Nigeria, it's just a few weeks, ah, there's a competition, so, so and so, did we qualify, are we going? They just start pulling and calling and pulling and the by yes. themselves. So we, and we are amazing. You need to go to these local states and see uh, the, go the to the local government, um, sorry, the sports council, and see the talents in that place. But the government is not paying attention to them. We need to do more now exactly. so that we can Let's take a call. We be have, more. <laughs> we have Idris calling from Shokoto. So, Salkoto. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show, Idris. Good morning. Man, Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. And you? Please go in ahead with fact, your contribution. I'm fine. In fact, you, you women are making us proud in Nigeria. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can, can hear you. Okay. I tell you women, 
In fact, you made us proud in Nigeria. Mm. In fact, you have wiped our tears away. Wow. <laughs> so I want to, I want to, I want to natural say, wipers of tears. Tiri Bosa for all the women in Nigeria. Yes, so Bosa, Bosa, Bosa. Bosa, Bosa, In fact, this is a clear vision that uh, women are taking off the stage. I'm telling you the truth. Mm -hmm. And I pray. <laughs> <laughs> He's listening to the TV. Please don't oh. do that. We can hear you. Go ahead. Oh, thank you so much, Idris. It's, it's, it, can you, see, you know the feeling. Mm -hmm. Mayam ma 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 raised a very, very valid point that there is a change in how we see women. Mm -hmm. There's, that, that's really part of it because even though we had other successful female um, athletes, th there's a new awakening right now that we must acknowledge mm -hmm. in women empowerment. And I know, Nima, you tend to speak for um, this encouragement of the female gender. And I'd like to hear your opinion on how this should affect other areas of life. Mm -hmm. And not just sports. Yes, not I, just sports. I wanted to quickly talk about how we women also contribute to how young girls kill this dream of athletics. Mm. So I come from a family of athletics. I had aunties. And your daughter is no, flying. Yes, and she's flying. So it's <laughs> so, sort of genetic. But I remember my auntie, she's now a madam just sitting down. She was such a fast runner. And then they used to tell her that you look so muscular. You, I also had biceps and I did not even run. <laughs> just from pounding and... <laughs> <laughs> you look so muscular and then sort of made her feel like less she, of herself. Yes. And that, that is part not feminine. of her that could have been, you know, uh, you know, more utilized was killed gradually by herself. Mm. Because she just wanted to look a certain way. Mm. And it was from the women in the family, not yeah. from any... Body outside, it wasn't the men. See the way they you attacked know? Um, so, Serena Williams. Yes, yeah, a lot yeah, because they like felt, man, yes, she's too hard. Yeah, yeah, too. We must now re redefine it and call it fit, fit woman yeah. rather mm -hmm. than, you know, so a, a athletic call woman. Call it what it is, a yes. fit woman. Because okay. you don't have to do so much, you know, I'm just getting yeah. uh, upper arms now. And it's better, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with, with it. Mm. It doesn't make you less I, a woman. I, I, and, you, and, and, you know, you make a very good point because. Um, the way that we look at them now and celebrate them and we're celebrating their body, it reflects so much in the beauty industry. Mm -hmm. yeah. so they, 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 this is the time where a lot of women are looking to women who have plastic in their bum and mm -hmm. their hips, yes. you know, and that for them is the definition of beauty. But now we're seeing another our own, kind of yes, another kind of beauty. Beautiful women. Really healthy, fit women. Mm -hmm. They've got all the curves without having to go under the knife, mm -hmm. but that it takes work. Mm -hmm. and, it, and, you know, in your body, to get the sort of body that you want, you would have to put in the work. And it just goes for everything else, that it takes real commitment, dedication, and consistency to finally get the success that you want. If it's look, if it's in beauty, if it's just in politics, governance, whatever it is that you do, and that women can do it. Yes. I just I love that my beautiful. daughter will be looking at this, mm -hmm. and for her, that is a good example of mm -hmm. what a beautiful woman should look yeah. like. I, 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 I want to quickly say that Aziza Oshola, when she won the Africa for the, yes, so for the optimist time, she keeps collecting she it. She collecting, collecting it, the best female, uh, you know, footballer, African female, female mm. you know, in, the, in Africa, and she appeared, she wore something a, a bit feminine, mm. But you know her style is she really no scent. She looks so beautiful. <laughs> she looks so beautiful. I just kept looking. I, I remember watching that over and over and yeah. over again. Just to say, she looks so beautiful. Can somebody just de use this and define what beauty is? As opposed yes. to, you know, just to buttress what Miriam said about it's this the plastic bumbo. <laughs> Let's take a call from Samuel. Samuel has called from Just Welcome to the show, Samuel. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the show. Go ahead. You're live. I am a first-time caller. Wow. Uh, I, I would really like to say I'm a feminist in code, but I'm one person who appreciates when men are making a change. Hmm. And I am really happy. And <laughs> all in Nigeria right now. Yeah. We are happy together. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Samuel. Um, I wanted to talk about the... The, the fact that you don't need to wait for government. These women, probably if they waited for government to be the one to sponsor their entire journey, yeah. it probably won't have happened. And there are many people out there right now who feel like, I've gone to do this competition. The government did not pick me up. The government did not 
choose me. The government didn't see my talent. And because somebody in government didn't see it, that doesn't mean that other people mm -hmm. will not see it. Mm -hmm. Because um, Toby's story, you know, every, all these athletes, they had independent people support them. They had foreign, foreign um, coaches also, yeah. pick on them. Mm -hmm. And that was because they consistently showed up. Not mm -hmm. blaming, not yeah. complaining, so, me, showed me. up. Yes, when they didn't have shoes, yeah. they kept running. Yeah. Mm. When they didn't have everything, when the facility, mm. oh, the stadium looks horrible. Yeah. They kept showing up. Yeah. And then someone cool. saw their talent yeah. and then... So we're, we're looking at it individually. Yes, yeah. I as am a talking country. collectively. I, no, 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 I get you. Yes. So yeah, if we need to be deliberate mm. about harnessing the talents of our youth, the mm. government has a lot to do. At of least course. the basics. Of yes. course. We can't be waiting then for people branches, to... No, we can't be waiting for uh, um, uh, foreigners to come and pick... Foreign coaches. Come on. <laughs> Let me watch We're celebrating the glory now, not mm. be we do yes. this so far. <laughs> Let me... Come on. Let's say... Everybody's claiming to be able to... The government of sports have really died. Yes. Nobody builds schools anymore and leave a, leaves a field. Yeah. They build really another really classroom everything. on the field. Lagos schools. You know, Lagos schools. Children have to do their entire house sports and then have to. Even when I was in primary school, we had to leave uh, Clegg and go to Abati Barracks to have a sports event. Mm. You know, schools. Usually, a good school would have, have a sports event field. and have, have, have an all-round educational platform for mm. every kind of um, children. We focus so much on academics. We killed and deliberately degraded other areas of education. The countries that took them gave them scholarship on Whoa. sports ground. Yes. Nigerians only look at this. And I also made this mistake on Saturday when my daughter, when I was saying to the sponsors, because I was a sponsor for the segment, mm. she ran, what it be the prize? So parents do this. <laughs> yes, it's a, it's yes, a they are asking what's the prize. You know, you're being what did they give you? Uh, already, you're being a manager. <laughs> so but there's there's this parents do. The reward does not have to be immediate. There's there's Monetary there's good them. thing in delayed gratification. Yeah. Yeah. You can allow that child grow that child and stop saying to the child. What do you they bring come? What do you they bring come yeah. mm -hmm. at the beginning you're of not the leaving career. off the child. Let's take a yes. call from mm -hmm. Roy from Abaka Lake. Hey, welcome to the show, Roy. Hello. I think that we lost that call. My okay, yes, I something. just want to say, when we talked about, when you mentioned grassroots, at the grassroots, how we're failed, you know, athletes and just sports in general. And that's so true because we hear about Winter Olympics. We have resources that we could have, that we can encourage people at the grassroots to participate um, in the Niger Delta, they always swimming. talk about how much they are really good at swimming because we know they are surrounded. Everywhere. Yes, they are surrounded by water. How many schools encourage swimming in As the Niger Delta? Oh. How the, governor the sporting council pools. in the Niger Delta? What what swimming competitions do they have on a monthly, yearly basis? There's so much that you can do. Just to be a minister for sports is not just to go and sit down and be signing papers. You need to be interested Think. first. In Think that, creatively. you know, you have to be interested and encourage people. There was a time, I remember, when we were growing up, we would hear, oh, the only sports that government, Nigerian government, interested in is football. And all the other athletes have to just suffer for, you they know, football. Budgets. And, you know, the truth is you have to do everything together. We need to do more. We, in, in Plateau, we have so many hills. People are just casually, you know, walk up the hills. We can do mountain climbing as also as something as a competition yeah. that people come from all of us, our country to yes. do it. And before long, it's a uh, sport that you export. Because it doesn't provide immediate cycling used to be, mm. yeah, Cycling used to be something that was quite popular on the plateau, you would mm -hmm. see. But I don't hear of it as much anymore. It's not advertised on TV. It's not something that people travel from different parts of Nigeria to go and watch and participate. But people will travel to France for the Tour de France. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is something Even that they wrestling, have done for, no for so long. You know, I, I'm, we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll continue this conversation in terms of, let us, let the, we, the ladies of your view, will provide government with creative solutions and options to boost the sporting system. Yeah. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. We have Richard all the way from Enugu. Welcome to the show. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Um, Lisa, we have something to be happy about, to be careful yeah, about for, you know, once in a very long time. So uh, congratulations to Nigeria. Congratulations to the ladies. Um, I was really happy watching them, but there's something I want to pick out here. 
Do you know that while the Commonwealth Games was going on, we had another competition, the under-20 um, Junior World Athletic uh, Championship going oh. on, and Nigeria was not participating. Oh. So when you now find all these other countries like Australia, Canada, and the rest of them winning gold medals in Commonwealth and in the Olympics, you think it's by magic. They it's have exactly. a succession plan mm. of how to bring in young mm. people yeah. into the mainstream um, sport. Yes. We are not doing that. Yes. Yes. Secondly, we should also recognize those uh, the Paralympians who yes. also won medals for us. We didn't celebrate them. And after watching their, their, their performance, I think we should start looking for a different definition for the word disability. Because the so-called able-bodied people couldn't give us um, the medals we were looking for, mm. but these people did us proud. Thank mm. you very much, and I'm happy this morning. Thank, Thank you yeah. so much, Richard. Oh, yeah. um, we, we've, we, we know that we've always done well with the Paralympics, very, very well. We've had several Nigerian men and women oh, time, yes. do very well, the mm. weightlifting especially, we thrive mm. there. But I wanted us to steer the conversation in a different direction. I feel that um, when you know more, you do more. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we blame our leaders because we assume they know all. But they are human beings. They are areas they just know. don't know. They might just not know. If they know, they probably would do. We should not assume they are wicked people and evil people mm -hmm. that want to just yeah. impoverish us. I hope that's not true. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's, let's dig into options. How do we feel that we can revive the sporting part of um, um, our sporting glory of Nigeria. Because sports is a type of intelligence. Mm -hmm. it's, as, it's, it's a viable intelligence. It's, it's the kind of aesthetics. People that are good in sports are just as brilliant as those that are good in academics. It's mm -hmm. a type of intelligence, and we're not acknowledging it enough. So Mariam already made a, a fantastic suggestion mm -hmm. in that people within the Niger Delta have water. Many of them, when they are born, they, they just naturally swim. Mm. But we haven't made it into a skill that can become a sport. Mm -hmm. and, they and bring about development. Bring about development within that area. Get yeah. sponsorship for that yeah. sport within so the area. You see, there's something that we're doing across Nigeria where only very expensive posh schools have pools, you know, have sporting events. Mm. And then our regular local public schools have nothing. And it does not make sense. Exactly. We're all Nigerians. And then if we want to see a change, we have to make sure that at all this, in all these schools, they are represented equally. Mm -hmm. Pools everywhere. Yes, a, a, one school may not be able to afford uh, a, a pool, a pool but, we have community, yes, but we have yes. community pools. Abroad, they do it now mm -hmm. where the schools can go and swim there. We must involve them when we're doing our sports. Inter-house sports should not be amongst it particular type of school. It should be properly done that Integrated. all schools are involved. You see, then whether we like it or not, sponsorship, advertisement, yeah, endorsement, all that has to too. be part of it. We yeah. need to find people, private companies that mm -hmm. would put, uh, um, you know, look into sporting events like that, especially with children. So let me, take, many, this, okay. um, let me take this call from Okereke. Okereke is calling from Kaduna. Oh, we lost oh, the call. We lost the call, yeah. Sorry. So, uh, um, for me, I remember um, growing up again, I attended um, Asaba Girls Grammar School, it used to be Anglican Girls Grammar School. And I know that we have, uh, like, after school every day, everybody picks their sports, like what you call electives now in mm. these uh, two schools. You pick your sports before you go home. You go to the field. If it's handball you're doing, the school was very big. It was a government uh, school built by the missionary, taken over by government. Had a lot, we had a, a standard tennis, uh, um, lawn tennis court. We had football field. We had volleyball field. We had basketball. We had everything. And so you pick your sport and you go there. And what uh, these um, government people do is that they come to school in the evenings and they start sporting those children that are doing amazing. I had classmates who had to leave school because they were now beginning to play for the state in their different sports. Mm. We don't have that anymore. And that's not because... Much. And some of them had to drop by the wayside because government was not equipped enough to handle their needs. So as a sporting person, you still need to go to school. You still need to have your education mm -hmm. properly taken care of. We have ministers of sports who 
cannot spot anything with pot belly they and all that. History of they do sports. not have history of sports. You cannot love something you have not participated exactly. in. Exactly. You cannot have a love for something that you don't even know how it means. So mm. you collect money, you sit in a meeting, collect money, and you move. And we're going for a representation outside the country. You have pot belly people going to represent, <laughs> and the people who are doing the Missy, work. Don't, before you shatter the table, before let me take a call. Sportsman, you don't, me. don't shatter this table. Yes, yeah, Let's take a phone call. Mike has, <laughs> <laughs> Mike has called in from Wales. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Yay. Uh, a very good morning to you all. Good morning, Mike. Uh, good morning, Mike. Basically, please, please, don't, please, basically, don't shatter the table. Don't shatter this table. table. <laughs> our cup, I'll be calm. Our cup for coffee. All right, uh, just a quick one. You know, you know, uh, Bissi made a statement. She said, you know, when she was that. And if you cast your mind back, because the time we have mobile track and field events in Nigeria, yeah, yeah, there is nothing like there is nothing like mobile track and field event again. Imagine, maybe they, not. all these things have just eroded down the drain. Now, if you look at it very carefully, this is the time for any wise and sensible politician to use to start creating sporting facilities yeah. to start getting our youth off the road. This is not the time you say you want to empower youth and you'll be bringing Ketan Apep, you'll be bringing mm, Okada, you'll be bringing all this rubbish. Exactly. Ribaru. This is mm. the time. This is how you empower youth. And then we'll be doing what? We'll be getting laurels, we'll be getting glories from things like this. Mm. It's, it's very easy, but the only thing our politicians know is just to buy Okada and Ketan Apep and give all these guys mm. and call it empowerment. It. It I hope it they'll be able to improve with this yeah. um, great things that these ladies have done for the countries and also to our Paralympians. We, mm -hmm. we have para, uh, Paralympians and the for what they've done. And we are really happy. At least this is bringing like a respite to the kidnapping, the killings and everything. And we, yes. and we yes. are so yes. appreciate it. Thanks. Mm. Thank you, you so much. I so, love it. Um, the, we, the um, caller was mentioning the fact that we don't have um, Team we Nigeria have... at the um, under-20 athletic championship held in Cali, Colombia, but the, the information we've got now is that a team of 19 home-based athletes and two foreign-based athletes and five coaches were in Cali for that competition. Mm. Um, yes. So that, that's just the information that we needed to put out there. Mm. Also, um, this current caller said that we no longer have mobile athletic um, competition. We might not know about it because there are many things going on now, now and it might not be as of. huge as it used to be before. Um, there are many people still doing little things. We just need to have the support of the government. Um, this, yes, yes, we were both, uh, Mayam, you were talking about um, swimming as a viable thing, having mm -hmm. communi community pools. Cycling. Cycling as something climbing. that can happen yeah. mm -hmm. in some communities. BC mentioned how we should have athletes. Some of us had the experience. Definitely. Because it, it will show in how well they are. are passionate they about are, something. They would put the strength and yeah. energy into what they are doing. I feel that every of this athlete now, these people are a result of some investment that was done years ago. Mm -hmm. And we need to now have a new set of investments, you know, um, sponsorship. We have many telcos. They make, they, we, have, we have companies, oh. banks. Okay. Usually when you see those athletes abroad, they wear a lot of badges. Brands. They wear yeah. brands. Yeah. They, are all, all these athletes in the next competition, every one of them should be wearing Nigerian badges on their body. Nigerian brands should put money and support them. It's yeah, as simple but, as that. But they have to, brands don't just support because they have so much money they want to throw some away. No, they they support when they are sure that it's viable because and they need to make this, something. So when the government ones. gives that foundation, yeah, I know brands this is will on the come government. in. Today I'm representing yeah. Ryan, so now I have to say, be we the people. Yeah. We the people must do what we can do. Here. Nigerian businesses should support successful sports and um, they athletes. Will not throw money away. Do that. If they are ready on the world stage, they need your money and their money your 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 they have the Why eyeballs the for the world stage I've been yes. the ones that have been trying to say a word. Please. so nigerian education we need to change this mindset where teachers make the people who are not academically sound less um, of themselves mm. and you know those who take time to work out i remember back then in command some people take time to work out constantly in the mornings the people that are lining up for competitions, even interstate competitions, are already on the field working out. And they made us seem, made it seem like, you know, these are, these are the less serious students. Mm. Mm. Then, the government themselves, how many schools, we've seen government build schools recently, how many schools are focused on the sports that are even regional or even um, local? You talked about the Niger Delta. Lagos is also a, part, a, a, a state behind the, 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 the oceans. But in Lagos schools, you cannot have pools because they know 
They cannot secure or you know, have a, 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 a safety guard around the pool. Somebody to watch or teach the students. So rather than yeah, invest yeah. in that core area of um, education, I'm like, let's do the cheaper one. Yeah. So let them all be in a class Classroom. and box stop. And when the holidays come, the government will also sponsor coordinate. You know how many agbeiros will become fantastic boxing, yes. boxers? Yes! Uh -huh. Because those agbeiros, they are very, very they strong. Well, they did not make so school interesting enough for them. Yeah. to boxing. So uh, did not make school interesting Sports is a them. very important else. part of education, whether yeah. we like it or not. And it will show in how, you know, what we, when we become Simple. adults, how we, you know, how we behave. Yeah. Um, taekwondo, I love Taekwondo mm -hmm. so much because it teaches you, you know, um, the tenets of Taekwondo. They'll tell you integrity, um, perseverance, self-control. These are things that you're taught as a child when you're participating in this particular uh, martial arts. And then you learn it and imbibe it. It becomes a part of your everyday life. Yeah. So you cannot take away sporting events and athleticism and everything out of um, athletics, out of education. I'm sure that our leaders have learned. They are inspired as well by these wonderful ladies who made Nigerians proud. And they will do more to encourage sports within our school system and our country at large. All right, we'll take a quick break now. When we come back, we go into the Let's Talk. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.